Hello and welcome to another video here at TechFigure. In this video I'm going to take you through my recommended picture settings that I promised in my original video on the review of the Hisense 52U7A ULED HDR 4K Ultra HD Smart TV. So what I'm going to show you is day, night, game and HDR settings. Most of these settings are fairly general and should be applicable and hopefully they should be of benefit. So you can try them out and if you don't like the results you can just reset the setting. So let's start by going into the menu. So you can see you've got various options. We want picture, under aspect ratio select automatic and that will give you the correct picture that you want in the correct aspect ratio. So up here you can see picture mode. Now cinema night, that's the nighttime mode. So we'll start with that one and we want to apply it to all sources. That means you'll do this once and it will apply to all the connections you have to this TV. A very useful little feature actually. Backlight, I'm going to leave the local dimming at low. This will give you an image that is more than bright enough at night. Don't want it too bright because that can be fatiguing for your eyes. Brightness, you can leave it at a default setting of 50, which gives you a good black level. Now, contrast, set this to 40. That's the point at which it won't clip whites. Color saturation, leave that at 50. Again, default setting. Sharpness, leave at zero. Attractive contrast, leave off. Ultra smooth motion, off. Noise reduction, turn that off. And same for MPEG noise reduction. Color temperature, warm. Color gamut, you can leave at auto. Now for gamma adjustment, I've used a setting of 2.4. That's because it's a nighttime setting. And make sure overscan is turned off when available, because you don't want it scanning the image because it actually takes away fine detail. Now going into the white balance control, now I'm using the two point here. There was an excess of red and an excess of green. So as you can see under red gain and green gain I've brought those down. Under colour tune I did a few little tweaks as well. So you can see under red we've got hue zero, saturation minus one and brightness zero. Under green, hue minus two, saturation three, brightness zero. Under blue, no changes there. Yellow, hue minus two, saturation minus one, brightness zero. Cyan, U1, saturation minus 4, brightness 0. And finally magenta, no changes here. Okay, so that's basically our settings for a nighttime mode. So let's go back to the beginning and we'll go on to cinema day, daytime mode. As you can see it immediately gets brighter and that's generally what we want during the day when there's more ambient light in the room. So again I'm applying this picture mode to all sources. And now backlight, local dimming set to medium to give you a nice bright image during the daylight. Now obviously this varies from room to room, you might have a room with a lot of windows, but this was applicable for my room. Brightness 50, contrast again at 40 so it doesn't clip, colour saturation at 50, sharpness at 0, adaptive contrast off, ultra smooth motion off, again noise reduction off and MPEG noise reduction off too. Colour temperature warm, colour gamut you can leave at auto, and then I'm using a gamma adjustment of 2.2 for the daytime setting. So next, overscan off. Again, color tuner. Well, we've applied color tuner to all settings, so that's fine. And under white balance, I've used the same settings as under nighttime mode. So minus eight for red and minus seven for green. Okay, and back to the beginning for the PC and game mode. This is the one you want to use when you're gaming to get the lowest input lag. Backlight, local dimming set at medium, brightness 50, contrast 50, color saturation 50, Sharpness 0, game mode on, this reduces the input lag and improves the responsiveness of the panel. Adaptive contrast off, noise reduction off, and MPEG noise reduction off also. You want to basically turn off as many processing things as possible, keeping the processing to a minimum in order to keep the input lag as low as possible. Color temperature off warm, color tuner we're applying to all the modes so that's the same. And then under white balance again it was the same as daytime and nighttime mode with a minus 8 for red gain and green gain minus 7. And I'm using a gamma adjustment of 2.2 for the game mode. Okay, so far we've covered daytime, nighttime and gaming mode in standard SDR mode. Now I'm going to switch my signal to a HDR signal, a high dynamic range signal, so I can show you some HDR settings as well. Okay, so I'm now viewing a HDR signal. So going back into the menu system, as you can see we now have our HDR options. So I'm using the HDR night option for the HDR movie mode and I'm applying it to the current source and backlight, local dimming at high and then brightness at 50, contrast at 50, color saturation at 50, next sharpness at 0, adaptive contrast off, ultra smooth motion off, noise reduction off and MPEG reduction off, color temperature warm, 
in color tuner they're all at zero and for white balance I'm using the same settings as for SDR mode. So that's the movie setting in HDR. So if you're gaming in HDR, go over to the settings. I'm applying the settings to the current source. Brightness at 50, contrast at 50, color saturation at 50, backlight local dimming at high, sharpness at zero, game mode on, adaptive contrast off, noise reduction off, MPEG noise reduction off, color temperature warm, so we're keeping the processing to a minimum, keeping that input lag low. So with the color tuner, it's the same as the HDR cinema. Again, for the white balance settings, it's copying across for the SDR settings. Uh, and that's basically it. So those are settings for a daytime, a nighttime, and a game mode in a standard dynamic range, SDR. And also a picture mode for gaming and also watching movies in HDR, high dynamic range. If you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.